Here's a real quick question for you. Out of all the golf YouTube videos that are out there right now, how many of them do you think deal with the full swing in the driver versus the short sticks? Hey everybody, welcome back to Golf Test Dummy, the channel where I use my game to try and help your game. And today I want to talk about the wedges and some of the shorter sort of feel shots around the green, okay? All right, let's do a standard little pitch and let's go maybe about 40 yards. What do you think? I don't know if that went 40 yards. I'm inside, I'm practicing into a net. How am I supposed to know if it goes out 40 yards or not? I got zero idea. I could probably figure it out if I had a simulator. Well, guess what? I've got a simulator coming. It's gonna take about another month. I ordered a Garmin Approach R10 simulator, and for some reason, I'm getting mine a lot later than everybody else. All the other golf YouTubers out there are getting their Garmin Approach R10 simulators weeks and probably even months before I'm gonna get mine. Maybe there's a big backlog of orders, I don't know, but anyway, it is coming. So you're going to see some big changes out here in the lab. We're gonna give this thing a revamp. We're gonna give it a makeover. It's gonna be extreme makeover, garage lab, golf test dummy edition. That's coming soon, so be on the lookout for that. But for today, we'll just kind of make believe that, you know, we can see the flyouts here. And really the only thing I'm looking at is, is the height at which this golf ball hits into the net. Now I've got a 60 degree wedge in my hand right now. I'm gonna hit some sideways into this net so you can kind of see them take off, but just I'll, I'll hit a few different ones and we'll see if we can spot the differences in how I got them to hit different parts of the net, okay? All right, so again, 60 degree wedge. Let's see, weight on the left side, I always do that. Uh, you can just about pick my foot up and take it out of the way, but weight on the left side, let's just kind of play it about right there, and we'll kind of square up the face, we'll take a normal grip, we'll see what I get. And with me, my short game is simple. I'm just thinking about making a pitch or a toss, as if I had the golf ball in my hand and throwing it into the net. So we'll set up with standard loft and kind of a standard setup, weight on the left, and we'll just make a little short, pitchy swing. Now that looked like it hit about right here on the net. Hey, give me the ball behind the camera. Golf balls aren't supposed to be going backstage. Another thing that I'll tell you guys, I don't know if you can see this or not, this glisten. This is pure sweat. It's hot out here, and I do have a fan, but I don't turn it on because I know that all of you out there would go, we can't hear over the fan, it's too loud, you need to turn it down. So I don't have the fan on, so I'm sweating out here in the garage with 97 degree heat and the UV index somewhere in the stratosphere. All right, so that hits somewhere about the mid-range right there. I would say like gut high. Let's see, I'll set up again, square face, weight on the left, waist high, okay. So somewhere between gut and chest height, some of your guts are gonna be bigger than mine. That's totally fine. You use your gut however you use your gut. Anyway, so that's pretty standard. Now let's see what would happen. Let's try ball position first, okay? We'll just move the ball position back. Again, I'm gonna put my weight on my left side like I always do, and I'm just gonna play it more on the inside of this back foot. Again, I'm gonna do sort of a square club face and all right, now we're talking belt, belt line, maybe a little groin action, belt to groin. And again, everybody's groin is different, so you measure with yours. One more time to confirm that it's not a fluke, okay? And I'm trying to not move on the pad this way or that way. I'm trying to stay in kind of the same spot. Weight on the left, square club face. Again, just same kind of hip height, throwing action with the right arm. Again, right here right here belt high now let's see what happens if okay let me take the ball position back to where it was and this time i'm going to open the club face up just a little bit and see see what happens there okay so again kind of ball in the same position on the mat you know play it more inside this left foot weight on the left this time i'm going to open the face just a little bit i don't know if you can see that or not but i'm going to open it just a little bit and again the same swing in motion Right hand control, weight on the left. Ooh, now we're getting up here to chest height, for sure. We're definitely in chest height territory. One more time to make sure it's not a fluke. We're gonna open it up, weight on the left, and just come to about hip high. Don't shut the face down when I'm swinging. Don't turn it over. 
and don't don't try and hold it open either because that's a whole nother it's a whole nother way to approach and get different heights off of the shots but just a standard swing nothing fancy Ah, uh, yeah, definitely chest high. Definitely up at my chest. Okay, now let's see what happens if we play the ball back in the stance, which should de loft it, but then we open the face up, which adds loft. What is that good for? So I'm playing it more back, club face open, hands ahead. Oh, now that went down just a little bit, and that time I felt a little bit more bite on the club. I felt like maybe with the face open just a little bit and playing it a little bit back in the stance and kind of trapping it coming down like that, I feel like that would have taken off a little bit lower, but then it would have had a little bit more spinning and check power to it. It might have, might have sat. One more time, weight on the left, club face open, play it a little bit back toward that back foot, chest height. It's about right here. So it's taken off a little bit lower, but it feels like it's got more sort of check power on it, right? Did I mention it's hot out here? We've got to get done with summer. Let's tell the government we don't want this summer crap anymore. I mean, come on. They've got, Congress has got to be able to do something about this. This is absolutely ridiculous. All right, so what exactly am I getting at? What am I driving at with this? I practice this in the garage from time to time. I have not filmed it before because quite frankly, I thought you guys would probably think it's boring and a lot of you have probably clicked off and you think it's boring so you're not here. So there's the three people that are watching. For those three people, I wanna explain why it is that I do this little exercise in here even though you can't see the ball fly out, even though you can't see it react on the green. It's because I can control my height. I can control my height based on what I do. Now I try, I absolutely try not to change my swing at all at all I've, i'm very much that i just set up with my weight on the left and then i'm just trying to make a tossing motion with my right hand i try not to have too much movement with my head or my body my shoulders anything like that i try not to have too much movement but i don't necessarily restrict it either have you ever tried to hit one of those shots that goes into the green a little bit lower and then you're counting on this rollout. That's gonna come into the green a little lower, it's gonna land a little hotter, it's not gonna have a lot of spin, and it's gonna it's gonna roll out, right? So maybe it flies halfway to the hole and then it rolls the other half toward the hole, right? But then you hit the shot, and all of a sudden it flies and it comes out at the right trajectory, but it stops, it just checks. What causes that? Well, if you take a 60 degree club and you catch it really on the way down and you bite into it, and you can really feel that that sort of spin coming off, once it hits the green, it's gonna start checking. It's not gonna wanna roll out. So we all know that a draw and a fade also have different kinds of spin. Everybody says a fade doesn't roll nearly as much and a draw rolls out even more. So what if I tried to apply draw and fade spin to a 60 degree wedge from 40 yards out? I'm not gonna get draw or fade but maybe I get some of the spin that is associated with a draw and a fade that might or might not promote rollout or check up. So with a draw, right, if we're gonna hit a normal draw, everybody knows this. In order to hit a draw, you need to be coming from the inside to the outside and the toe of the club needs to turn over and release, right? But if you wanna fade, the club needs to be coming down the line and slightly across the golf ball and the face needs to be held off so that it doesn't turn over and create that spin, right? As an intention, if I sit here and set up and I want to hit more of a draw with the wedge, I'm going to start thinking about coming from the inside and attacking it and letting it roll over and letting my hands release out toward the target, right? So if I do something like that, right? That came out about right here, which is a little bit lower than what I was doing over here but I let the toe really turn over and sort of release. I guarantee you when that ball gets on the ground, it's gonna roll out. It's not gonna check up. Now this is a 60, and depending on how far I hit it and how high I hit it, what trajectory I hit it at, it's gonna dictate how it comes into the green and how it lands. Is it coming in really steep? 
As Lee Trevino said, like a butterfly with sore feet, or is it coming in like Gary Player, how he talked about all amateurs need to be hitting a bump and run, bump and run, bump and run. All right, so let me try and apply the inverse to that. Instead of having that in to out and really letting the toe turn over, what if I, I get a little bit steeper with it and I, 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 I don't try and fight it. I, I don't want to force anything when I'm trying to swing, but what if I try and, you know, just Make sure that the club doesn't release too much, too quick, too early. All right, so this time I'm gonna set up. Uh, I wanna feel like I'm kinda of coming across it. I definitely wanna still feel that toss. I want my weight on my left, but I wanna kinda of hold through. Let's see if I can do that. All right, here we go. All right, now that one, I bet you, came out with a little more spin on it. It probably came out with a little more spin because I'm coming in a little bit steeper and I really kind of held my hand off. We'll try one more, here we go. All right, you ready? Weight on the left, let's hold through it. See that? How I finished, the, the face of the club is still kind of open. So let's go back, let's try the other one. And let's try to do the draw, and let's hold it at the end and see what I get there, right? Now look, see? See how the toe is turned over? So if you're applying the draw and fade principles, even to your short game shots, of course, the ball is not gonna hook. The ball's not gonna fade. It just doesn't have the time and it's too high. It's not flat enough. The trajectories, the spin rates, the speed, all of that stuff is working against it. However, when you're talking about what kind of action you're putting on the golf ball, it can help you to determine, is it going to release or is it going to bite and check up? So try some of that stuff, see if it helps you out. It's stuff that I play around in here. You don't have to do it out on a putting green. You don't have to do it in some crazy expensive short game area in your backyard or at your local course. You can do it indoors when it's raining. You can do it inside when it's a billion degrees and it's like the sun outside and the sweat is dripping off of you. And you know, since you're not recording, you can, you can have like a fan on or something, or maybe even put an AC unit in your window. Just experiment like that, see what you get, and then when you take it out to the course, then watch as your practice comes out naturally from what you've been ingrating into your system and see what happens with the golf ball on the practice green when you do get out a chance to get out there and get to it. See you on the next video. Be looking for the Garmin Approach R10 simulator coming soon and the lab makeover. Peace.